Hey everyone, welcome to another video by Stock Trades. My name is Matt, and today we are going to be taking a look at a buzzword that has been making the rounds recently, and that is the metaverse. The metaverse is a term that has been used quite loosely in recent times, uh, but we will talk about a few stocks that investors should consider if you want exposure to the metaverse. And we'll get to that right after this. Before we jump into looking at the investment themselves, let's take a step back and describe what is a metaverse. Well, the terminology, as mentioned, was first conned in a book called Snow Crash. And in that book, it referenced the concept of individuals and people interacting with each other in a virtual world through the use of avatars. If that sounds familiar, it should, because there are many gaming platforms today that do that very thing. Now, that was a little bit I uh, think Ready Player One, if you will, that movie, uh, that is the ultimate metaverse where you throw on a pair of virtual reality goggles and all of a sudden you're immersed in this virtual world. We are at least a decade away from achieving that level of metaverse, but the concept is there. It's about interacting with folks in a virtual world through avatars. So that's it in a, in a, in a nutshell. Uh, it is a term that's being used very loosely, so investors will wanna be careful that when a company spits out the term metaverse, they are in fact referring to something that you think is a metaverse. So not every virtual platform is going to be a metaverse. And I'm a little weary of companies that are creating all their own metaverses. Uh, so I think that we are gonna see some consolidation in this area. There's gonna be a few metaverses that will be the key to you know, our entire social networking, if you will, uh, but not every company is gonna be successful in this area. So I think it's important for everyone just to, just be mindful that when the term metaverse is being thrown out there, that it aligns with what your views and expectations are of a metaverse. Feel like I'm saying metaverse quite often, but that's okay. So with that in mind, let's jump into some investments. And the first one I'm gonna be talking about is Facebook. Now, if you've been following this company for a while, you'll know that Facebook is actually not called Facebook anymore. It changed its name to Meta Platforms. Now, why did it do that? Well, the premise is quite simple. The company intends to transform itself from a web 2.0 internet social media company to a web 3.0 metaverse company. Now, while that may seem like a shift, it's actually not all that big of a stretch if you think about it. Today, we do most of our social networking via web 2.0. So, you know, internet sites, Facebook, Twitter, those types of things. In the future, it's likely that we're going to be doing most of our social networking within a metaverse using avatars. And Facebook is now positioning themselves to be a leader in that area. Will it be successful? It's a great question. One of the things and one of the big knocks against Facebook is that it's once again going to be a centralized metaverse. So that means that it will control everything that goes in and goes out of that particular metaverse. Circling back to Snow Crash and other platforms like Sandbox and Decentraland, it's really about decentralizing uh, the metaverse space. So Facebook is doing the opposite. It is centralizing its own metaverse, which will be interesting considering the company has had some issues with privacy and data and how it uses our data. So we'll see how it eventually becomes successful. But as the as one of the largest social networking companies in the world, it is probably best positioned to bring the masses over to the metaverse. Next up, we're going to talk about Nike and Adidas. Now, if you haven't been following the NFT space or you're not quite up to speed with what's happening in terms of the metaverse, these two might surprise you. But really, if you think about it, it shouldn't. Why? Well, if we're gonna be walking around and interacting with each other with avatars, these avatars are going to have to look like something, right? They're gonna have fashion attached to it. And Nike and Adidas have recognized this trend. However, they have both taken very different approaches. Let's start with Adidas. Adidas went ahead and purchased a pretty significant plot of land in the Sandbox. And the Sandbox is one of the world's leading metaverse platforms. The company also partnered with Board 8 Yacht Club and Punks Comics, two of the most notable names in the NFT space. Finally, it also partnered with Coinbase, which is a pretty notable event because Coinbase will be launching their own NFT platform and Coinbase has millions of users. We'll get to that a little bit later because it is Coinbase is actually on our list. But needless to say, Adidas approach is partnering with existing 
uh, companies or brands which are already building metaverses or intend to you know, participate in said metaverses. So that's Adidas's approach. It's also worth noting that the company recently launched its own NFT through Adidas Originals, where holders of said NFTs can actually claim and exchange for an actual Adidas product and or uh, will be eventually be able to use outfit their avatars, if you will, with Adidas merchandise. So that's a very interesting thing. And I believe, and Adidas is one of the first fashion brands to launch their own NFT product. It'll be interesting to watch. Adidas Originals have really focused on the NFT space. And as it stands, Adidas is a leader in this area. Nike's approach is entirely different. Well, it recognizes that people are going to want to, you know, wear the best fashion brand and Nike's brand is one of the top fashion brands in the world. RTFDK Studios was an emerging Web3 company which was designing highly sought after wearables for the metaverse. But what Nike did is they bought them outright. So now instead of being you know, owned by the community and more of a decentralized organization, even though it wasn't, it was still owned by RTFTK Studios, instead going about it themselves, they decided to sell to Nike. Now in the Web 3.0 crowd, that didn't go over too well. Uh, a lot of individuals called them sellouts and whatnot to the big company uh, you know, conglomerate, if you will. However, there's no denying that what they're doing in the space is pretty impressive. And Nike recognized this and now it gives Nike a pretty significant reach in the NFT space and consequently the metaverse space. So the difference here is that Adidas has partnered with existing brands, existing metaverses, whereas Nike went ahead and bought an existing brand. So you see here how they are two different approaches. One's more of a centralized approach and one is more a company looking to work within a decentralized approach. While their products and whatnot will continue to be centralized under the Adidas brand, they are working more so with decentralized organizations. Whereas Nike went outright and bought its own you know, Web 3.0 company and is likely going to be centralizing and controlling all of that. So it's going to be interesting how this all fleshes out. And what will be the best model will you know, take years to actually figure out. But it's important to note that both of these companies, Adidas and Nike, I would say are at the forefront of the fashion industry in terms of the metaverse. Next, we're going to talk about Coinbase and GameStop. I consider these to be fringe plays on the metaverse. However, they may yet play a very important role in terms of infrastructure. I say may because neither of these companies have launched a product yet. Well, all they have done is announce their intentions to. So in the fall, Coinbase announced that it was going to launch its own NFT marketplace. And I'm not going to go into great details about NFTs because that warrants a whole other video on its own and it's a very pretty complicated subject. Suffice to say that NFTs are digital representations of assets, right? So think of if I'm wearing my stock trades hat in the metaverse, that stock trades hat is going to be a digital collectible, if you will, and that takes the form of an NFT, non-fungible token. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about NFTs and maybe at some point in time we'll do a video on NFTs, uh, but for now, just keep in mind that NFTs are digital assets and they need a platform for individuals to buy and sell those digital assets. This is where Coinbase comes in and GameStop. So for now, there are a couple of platforms out there, OpenSea being the largest platform. They have about a million active users uh, right now, today. There are other platforms out there such as Rarible, Foundation, Super Rare. There's a few different ones out there. Nifty Gateway, uh, one that just launched, looks rare, but no platform has really brought in the masses as of yet. That is why everyone is very excited for Coinbase. To put things into perspective, Coinbase has 73 million global users. As mentioned, OpenSea has about a million users, but it only has about 300,000 active wallets on a monthly basis. So bringing 70 million new users to the NFT space is pretty impressive. And there's a lot of folks in the NFT and Web 3.0 industry that are just waiting for Coinbase to launch this NFT marketplace. The anticipation is that once Coinbase launches, the masses are gonna flow into the NFT space. And subsequently, they'll flow into the metaverse. Metaverse such as Sandbox, Decentraland, as mentioned, are, are probably the two biggest ones right now, but there are a plethora of other metaverse platforms that are currently being created. So it's not just limited to those two, but those are the two largest at this point in time. So there needs to be infrastructure to be able to buy and sell your assets, your digital assets. And that is where a platform like Coinbase will come into play. At this point in time, there is no publicly traded company that has an NFT platform 
That's why Coinbase is pretty exciting. GameStop, on the other hand, only just recently announced, I think it was probably about a week ago or maybe two weeks ago, where it announced its intentions to launch an NFT platform. Personally, I have a little bit of antibodies to GameStop, just given the whole Wall Street bets fiasco and how this is a company that has been valued at astronomical valuations. However, this has me a little bit excited, and not just because, you know, oh, it's just another NFT market space. But the other side of the metaverse is P2E gaming, so play to earn gaming. It's going to be a huge component of the metaverse. And GameStop, as a gaming company, is actually well positioned here. Now, I'll be interested to see how they launch this NFT platform and how it will distinguish themselves from something like Coinbase. But given that they have access to all these gamers, which at this point in time haven't transitioned over to Web 3.0 gaming, I think they are well positioned to bridge that gap. So it's one to watch very, very early for GameStop. And once again, it's gonna be one you're gonna to have to monitor because of the involvement of Wall Street bets and because of all that stuff that happened in early 2021. But cautiously optimistic with GameStop because I think they are well positioned to bridge the gap between traditional gaming and gaming in Web 3.0 and ultimately the metaverse. Two other companies worth considering here are Roblox and Epic Games. Epic Games being the parent company of Fortnite. So we talked about the term metaverse and what it means, right? It means, you know, interacting with individuals in a virtual world through the use of avatars. So not surprisingly, you know, pretty much every game, if you will, might actually fall under that bucket. However, Roblox and Fortnite have established themselves as the leading games in this area, if you will. There's many examples. Minecraft is another good example of it. Uh, however, there's quite a few out there. And Epic Games and Roblox are well positioned. Roblox actually is one of the largest gaming companies in the world. It actually has more than 47 million user daily users on its platform and has 10 million developers, which create new worlds all the time. So it's kind of a very interesting model. Once again, however, Fortnite and Roblox are both centralized, whereas the trend at this point in time is more towards decentralized. So it'll be interesting seeing how, you know, traditional gaming companies kind of, you know, adapt to Web 3.0 and decentralized aspect of it. However, don't discount Roblox and Epic Games. Both are well positioned just with respect to the games that they develop and their own metaverse platforms that they've already created. And remember, they, they already have the user bases. They already have their own ecosystems where you can buy and sell within the game and you can already upgrade. Roblox has their own currency in, in, the terms, of, in terms of Robux. So there's lots of potential within these two games. However, they are centralized. So just an important point to note. Another US-based company is Disney. Uh, you know, we can't we can't discount Disney. And Disney has alluded to the fact that it is watching the metaverse. It is going to be taking steps to creating its own metaverse. But it's interesting because Disney actually made some comments that it doesn't believe that a metaverse has to be a virtual world. And this is smart on their part because augmented reality is going to be playing a big role in our lives moving forward. Disney's already doing some augmented reality things at their parks anyways. And I think that there's a huge potential for them to kind of build on that. And one of the things that really excites me about Disney is the fact that they have one of the best IP portfolios in the world. Their brands are unmatched. You know, whereas other metaverse, whereas a lot of metaverse companies that are just starting out have to build that brand. Disney already has it. They have the fans already. So it's nothing for them to build upon that and create a pretty impressive universe. If there's going to be one company that can build a centralized metaverse and be successful, it's Disney, simply because they have the portfolio of brands to support it. You know, there have been some very successful examples of, you know, Web 3.0 brands. Think of Board 8 Yacht Clubs, I mentioned them previously, and Punk's Comets, you know, World of Women. There's been a lot of very good brands out there but nothing compares to Disney at this point in time. You might ask you know, a regular Joe on the street what Board 8 Yacht Club is, they may have no idea. That being said, they are hugely popular in the Web 3.0 space. So just something to consider. I think Disney is well positioned. They haven't released any of their plans yet. They've just alluded to the fact that they are looking at it, uh, but it's only a matter of time before Disney jumps into the metaverse and 
I would say create their own. There's potential for them to partner with others. I just feel like given what Facebook has done, what Nike has done, I believe that Disney's probably gonna go the route of building their own, uh, but they may surprise us. Uh, they've already partnered with a company called Vivi to deliver uh, Disney NFTs, which is a third party platform. So there is potential that they do take the Adidas route and partner with other metaverse platforms. It remains to be seen. But bottom line, when metaverse becomes a reality, Disney is going to be a big player. The last company on our list is Tokens.com, uh, which trades under the ticker COIN on the NEO exchange. It's actually the first Canadian company on our list, and it is by far the smallest company on our list. It's a micro cap. So it is not for the defensive investor. Please do your due diligence. This is one that would be highly risky and highly volatile. I should also mention that it is a company I own and it is also a company I sold. I still own it today, but I did sell a portion to recoup my costs when it ran up last time. But I'm holding this company for the long term because I really believe in its vision and all the things that it has done up to date, I'm really liking. So tokens.com started off as a staking company. It was actually one of the first publicly traded uh, staking DeFi companies in you know North America, if you will. I was particularly attracted to staking because if you believe in the long-term future of crypto, staking is very attractive because you earn crypto rewards when you stake and you lock your crypto away. So tokens.com was primarily focused on staking before. However, it has recently taken steps to establish itself in the metaverse. It has done so through building a majority position in the metaverse group. Today, it owns about 67% of this particular company, which dubbed itself as an NFT metaverse real estate play. So in effect, what it does is it buys and develops plots of lands within various metaverses. Now, Tokens.com went all in with the metaverse group, which made the single largest purchase in metaverse history. It bought a 166 parcel of land in Decentraland, worth about 3 million at the time, and in the heart of Decentraland's fashion district, which is probably one of the most sought after areas in Decentraland. To give you an idea of the significance of Decentraland today, a single parcel of Decentraland has a floor price of approximately $14,000. And that is, I guess, the nether regions of Decentraland, not in any of the you know, high prolific areas of Decentraland. So, you know, it was a purchase made about three months ago, probably longer than that now, maybe four months ago. And, you know, Tokens.com is well positioned in Decentraland right now. It's also doing some unique things. It partnered with Decentraland. Decentraland is now going to build on Tokens.com land and host virtual fashion week there. So it's pretty exciting in terms of the metaverse group and tokens.com, they're gonna be the focus of the central end for a week when fashion week takes place. So very interesting moves that tokens.com is making, but they're not stopping there. They're actually gonna build a portfolio of assets across different metaverses. So although right now the focus has been to central end, they are going to be doing different things. Case in point, they recently partnered with Super Rare and they intend of spending up to $1 million to develop a land on the Superware metaverse platform. So tokens.com is really looking to establish itself as a metaverse real estate play through the metaverse group. This is very exciting to me. We all know how real estate works in the real world. It works very similar in the virtual world. So, you know, getting a head start on buying land within these metaverses and I would I should say these decentralized metaverses because we're not sure yet if individuals can buy land and actually own said land in centralized platforms whereas in decentralized platforms when you buy said land it is yours and you can transfer it and buy and sell at your will so it's very interesting I like the approach that tokens.com is taking and I believe this is the very beginning for tokens.com once again highly volatile highly risky so please do your due diligence on this company uh, but it is probably the most metaverse centric company out there in terms of publicly traded companies also worth noting it trades, I mentioned it previously, it trades under the ticker COIN on the NEO exchange, but Coinbase also trades under the symbol COIN on the NASDAQ. So don't get the two mixed up if you're looking at buying them. You know, they both have the same symbol. So just make sure that you're buying the right coin, whether you want Coinbase or whether you want tokens.com. And with that, we're at the end of our video. This is a subject that I'm pretty passionate about. It's one that I'm very interested in. I'm heavily invested in NFTs. I'm invested in metaverse plays. I'm invested in, I mentioned tokens.com. I also own shares in Disney, you know, for full disclosure, I don't own the others, but I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts on, you know, the companies we listed here today and, 
you know, are you invested in the metaverse? Uh, and, in, and if so, which way? Uh, there might be companies I'm missing. There are, you know, thousands of companies out there, but these are the ones that I feel have made the most prominent moves in terms of the metaverse. And I think it's ones that investors might want to look at, you know, if they want exposure to the metaverse. So I hope you liked the video today. As always, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to leave that comment if you wanna win that year subscription to premium. If ever you wanna know what premium is all about or feedback that we've received from our premium members, you can always check out trustpilot.com which is an independently uh, verified review site. You know, we'll let our members speak for themselves in terms of our premium platform, but you can't wait if you don't comment. So comment below and you know, hope you liked the video and we'll talk to you next time.